If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. Declaring war on the New World Order. TruthRadioShow.com Shalom and welcome to the Dan Bedani Show on TruthRadioShow.com and we are in the 1 Corinthians chapter 5. So if you missed chapters 1 through 4, please go to the playlist and watch them. This is an in-depth uh, comprehensive study of the Bible chapter by chapter. So uh, what we do, guys, Bible study approach. Number one is a pray for wisdom and understanding. So let's do that right now. So bow your heads and pray to the Lord Jesus, Yeshua Messiah. Uh, please forgive us of the sins and trespasses, transgressions, or abominations that we individually may have committed today, Lord. And please cover us with your precious blood. Thank you so much for everything. And Heavenly Father, we ask you to help us today uh, to write your word upon our hearts with the Holy Spirit for the uh, First Corinthians chapter 5 today. And that we may have divine understanding of your word. And we ask you to bless us all and protect us all from the forces of evil. And thank you for everything you provide for us, uh, this broadcast, uh, the, the great people that tune in to watch us, and just bless the hearts a lot, and bless them, uh, again, to protect them from all the forces of evil, and if they're going through any spiritual or any kind of mental, physical, emotional distress, I ask you, Lord, to comfort them. In your mighty name we pray, amen. So, guys, we read the uh, Bible in context, the Scripture in context, right? This context is key. Very important to understand. And let the Scripture interpret Scripture. So let's begin. If you got a Bible, guys, uh, please open up to... One second. Yep, almost lost. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 5. And we do good on screen. We use the King James Version here. So uh, if you got a Bible, regardless, open it up because I invite you to read it for yourselves. So we don't lean on our own understandings, and we just uh, let the Holy Spirit work with it. So again, this is uh, Paul, like we described in the last four videos. Uh, this is Paul's letter to the Church of Corinth. And Paul's very concerned. He, he comes back to the Church of Corinth because there's much division going on, and a lot of stuff, just the church is falling apart, the Church of Corinth. So he goes into the Church of Corinth and tries to unify everybody together and bring order and justice in this church. So, um, could continue on chapter 5 here, because it's just one continuous message. So, again, if you missed chapters 1 through 4, if you missed them, guys, go back and watch it, because you're not going to understand anything from this point on. Very important to understand, because um, this entire book here is all in one context. So, uh, verse 1, it says, It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. And what is fornication? So I want to, this is the point of the studies here, to bring, um, you know, I know what fornication is here, but so you can understand what fornication really is. It's very important to understand these words. And here's the thing, guys, don't ever feel dumb. I got to point this out because a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to say nothing, especially if you're in a Bible study group. I don't want to say nothing, and if you, you know, ask questions, if I don't know what a word means because I don't want to look dumb in front of people. Don't worry about that. It's not about looking smart or dumb. If you don't know what a word means, guys, go look it up. It's very important because if you pass that by, it'll take away the entire meaning of the chapter or the, the verse or the context, whatever the case. So very important to understand that. That's the point of a Bible study. Take your time. Don't race the word. We'll examine what the words mean if you don't know what they mean. Plain and simple. So fornication is a sexual intercourse between people who are not married to each other. And that can go um, homosexuality or straight sex. Regardless, if you're not married, it's fornication. Plain and simple. So it is reported commonly that there's fornication among you. This is Paul addressing the church of Corinthia, telling the people, I'm getting reports by people and all that that you all commit the fornication. And such fornication is not so much as named among the Gentiles. That one should have his father's wife. So it's the people in here committing uh, acts of incest. So a father's wife could be a stepmother as well, or your natural mother. But regardless, okay, that's uh, incest there, yeah. and it's still fornication as well. And you are puffed up and have not rather mourned 
and that has done this deed might be taken away from you among you. Taken away from among you. And if you notice still the, this deed, when you talk about deeds in the Bible, and the book of Enoch as well, when it talks about the angels, the fallen angels, uh, descending on Mount Hermon, and they swore a pact to have fornication with the children, uh, I'm sorry, the woman of man, the daughters of men, to have, bring babies with them, you know, to have birth babies with them. So uh, they, they kept mentioning the word deed. So a deed is having sex with somebody. So verily I say, uh, I'm sorry, for I verily, as absent in the body, but present in the spirit, have judged already, as though I were present, concerning him that has done this deed. Again, have the sexual fornication. Then he says, absent in the body, but present in the spirit. So the Holy Spirit was letting him know, uh, Paul here, what was going on in this church. And has judged already as though I were present. So Paul already was told uh, what was going on here. And concern him that has done this deed. Concerning the person or people that has done this fornication here. And it looks like uh, that one should have his father's wife. The person have sex with his father's wife. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together in, in my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. So this is Paul explaining himself. This is not me of my own power or own doing. This is through the Lord Jesus Christ. To deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, you know, Satan wants to destroy the flesh and all that. So we, Paul wants to deliver him them from the sexual fornication because when you commit fornication you're destroying the flesh that's corruption of the body and the temple you being the temple of God you're, you're, you're desecrating it your glory is not good know ye that you that a little leaven leaven the whole lump so I talk about when you uh, roll dough right you put a leaven in it to make it rise and all that stuff so he says, little make that whole lump. You know what I mean? Make it to a lump. So basically, you're making something big. You know, like a, a turning sin into something serious. And purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may have, be a new lump, as you are unleavened. For e, uh, even Christ our Passover is say, uh, sanctified for us. Sacrifice. I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. I'm a little tongue tied today. So one, let me read that again. So purge out. The old leaven, in other words, get rid of the old sin. Okay, to get rid of the sin and everything else, and that you may be a new lump. Repent, get rid of the sin, make yourself clean. Stop doing what you're doing, like in this case, it's fornication, as you are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Talk about grace, that Jesus will forgive us. So turn from your sins, he's saying. And what you're doing, guys, is you're doing you're disgusting stuff, guys. Stop. And this is, again, Paul talking to the people in the Church of Corinth. Stop with this fornication and all that stuff. You know, get rid of that leaven that's um, polluting the dough, basically. You know what I mean? So because uh, uh, in Jewish custom, in Hebrew custom, I should say, it's like they eat unleavened bread and stuff like that. But what that means is pure. So what you want to do is make yourself pure. Remove the leaven from you. So if you need any more clarification on that, guys, put it in the comment section, please. And I'll do my best to explain it better. So, um, therefore, let us feast. Keep the feast, I'm sorry. Let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven or malice of the wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. So notice how he knows the, the Passover, right? For Christ is our Passover, is sacrifice for us. Because um, you know, the original Passover was when the angel of death passed over Egypt and killed the firstborn of the Egyptians. And, and that's where the Passover started and all that stuff. So Jesus uh, became the final lamb sacrifice because uh, during the Passover, 
uh, the, the Jews, they had to, uh, sac- I'm sorry, yeah, they sacrificed a lamb and put the lamb's blood over the doorway so the angel of death could pass by it without harming the family. And that sacrifice, they was offered up to God, the lamb, and they, they ate of it. So Jesus is the Lamb of God and the Lion of Judah. He became that final lamb sacrifice so we don't have to sacrifice animals no more to cleanse our sins. You pray to Jesus and accept him as our sacrifice, the blood of Jesus Christ. He's the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. And I wrote unto you an epistle not to accompany with fornicators. So he's telling the pistols, don't accompany yourself with fornicators. Don't hang out with them, don't associate with them. Yet, not to, all together with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then you must go need, I'm sorry, you must, ye needs go out of the world. So, what's going on here? Look at this, commandments. Second commandment here, uh, yeah, seventh commandment. And if you know what a kavit, I forgot what kavitis means. It's, I think it's covered, yeah, covered. All right, right there. So having or showing great desire to possess something belonging to someone else. All right, so you're covered. So that's a ninth commandment violation. I mean, sorry, the 10th commandment. That's commandments lying. So uh, fornicating is committing adultery too. It's the seventh commandment here. And then you got a 10th commandment violation here. You know, it's kind of funny, right? Again, uh, I hate to keep bringing this up, guys, but well, these modern day churches, <laughs> they have the nerve to tell you that the 10 commandments are abolished. They don't matter no more. Literally, that's what they say. That, you know, grace is a free pass to sin when it's not. But as you see, we've been through Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, now 1 Corinthians. Every single one of these chapters so far in the New Testament, how many times is it mentioned in the Ten Commandments? How many times? Dozens. And if I didn't know any better, I'd think the Ten Commandments are mentioned more in the New Testament than the Old. That's why Jesus said in Revelation chapter 14, verse 12 says, keep the commandments of God in the faith of Jesus Christ specifying the commandments of God and Jesus' two great commandments are what? The two hangers of which the Ten Commandments hang in. The Ten Commandments are, went nowhere. They apply in the New Covenant. A lot of people don't understand that. They think the Old Covenant is all done away with and all that stuff. No. Then why would Paul, if that's true, why would Paul sit here and tell you don't, don't fornicate? Don't covet. Don't uh, commit idolatry. Why would he say that if they were abolished? Grace is not a free pass to sin. And sin is what? Transgression of the law. What is the law? It's commandments. <laughs> Common sense stuff, man. And uh, But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or somebody who covets or an idolater or a railer, this is three commandments right here. Fornicator, this is the seventh 10th and 2nd commandment with that. He's saying don't have anything to do with that or people who do that. Or a railer. I don't even know what a railer is. Or a drunkard. Or an extortioner. Which such and one not to uh, see. Eat, not to eat. Let me see if I know what a railer means in the Bible here. Railer meaning in the Bible. So... Uh, the translation of blasphemy. All right, so somebody who commits one who rails. I just want to get a direct understanding because I... So it says, uh, no testament to rail is a translation of blasphemy. All right, so somebody commits blasphemy. So again, he says, but now I have written unto you 
not to keep company. Don't associate, don't bother people. If any man, any people, that is called a brother, be a fornicator, or somebody covets, or an idolater, or a railer, you know, committing blasphemy, or a drunk, or extortion. You know, extortionaries, right? Extortion is somebody who holds you. Let me just get the biblical meaning of it because, again, um, extortion these days is uh, somebody who, um, in other words, tells you, I'm not going to say nothing, but I will tell people if you don't pay me like 100 bucks. That's extortion. Or what the government does today, they extort you for a permit, so you know, for a right that you should already have. It's crazy, right? So, extortion in the Bible meaning is uh, indicates that one who is extortioner is guilty of snatching away from another by strife, greed, and oppression, which does not lawfully belong to him. All right, so that's the biblical meaning. Very important to understand that. Because you got to understand, guys, um, words change different meanings over the years, obviously. So, this is why we look these words up. And again, don't ever, ever, ever be ashamed to do that. And it's always good to get the clear meaning to these things because now you have a full, clear understanding of what uh, the Bible's talking about. Yeah, don't associate with these people. And with one, uh, with such a, and one, not know not to eat. For what I have to do to judge them also that are without so what do I have to do with them to judge them that are without and do not ye judge them are within but them that are without God's judges therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person so what is Paul saying here So it sounds like he's saying like the judge without uh so don't do not ye judge them that are within. Is a question that don't you judge them for what they're in? So in other words, like yeah, uh, do away with them, plain and simple. Warn them what God says. Say, hey, listen, you you do this wrong. I mean you're not supposed to be doing this. There's severe consequences about this, especially spiritually, with the Lord. You're breaking commandments here. Warn them and walk away. Don't associate with them. If they don't repent from it. In other words, if you've got a brother or a friend who keeps doing this stuff, all he does is like have sex with girls and when you guys hang out, like he's in the backseat, you're driving, you know, you, know, you get the picture, right? Don't associate with these people. Try to watch them. Listen to them. You can't be doing this. Because it brings temptation to you. You know, all kinds of stuff goes involved from that. And since we're all adults here, guys, I can tell you straight up, all right? So if you're, especially if you're in a relationship or single too, and if you want to remain like pure, you want to wait for that special someone, if you're hanging out with people who are having sex with this one and that one, and just say you're in a room full of, you all in this room, right? And there's a bunch of girls in there and your friends are having sex with them. And there's other girls there. They come up and start tempting you. Temptation is going to lead you astray. Damn, I mean, I could use a billion examples. And if people are doing this, guys, you need to tell your friends or family, say, listen, I can't hang out if you keep doing this. I got a girlfriend or I want to, um, you know, have sex with the right woman when I get married. Because this looks like what's going on here. Because at the beginning here, we heard that it's about fornication. Right? So this is what's going on. Uh, Paul is concerned because of the fornication going on in this group. But them that are without, without God, judges, therefore put away from among yourselves that wicked person. So put away, what's that mean? Just do it with. Put away, don't associate, and if you want a clear understanding... Declaration dissolving a marriage or whole part in it. So he put away that's in marriage, of course. To send, uh, to let go, send away, dismiss one's wife or uh, betrothed, divorce. 
So when they say, put, your, put away your wife, just divorce them. And you know, you can do that if she cheats on you. But anyway, this is putting away people, in other words, your friends. Do away with them. If they don't do that, because they're going to lead you astray as well. I mean, that, that's um, and I could attest for this, guys. When you hang around a bunch of people that are swearing up a storm and everything, the next thing you're swearing. And it's happened to me, uh, and I'm not no uh, uh, innocent person. I was uh, with a bunch of people, and um, all of a sudden, everybody's swearing and all this, all of a sudden thing, uh, I'm starting to swear. That I caught myself, I'm like, oh man, I gotta stop this. You know what I mean? Because the, the Holy Spirit hit you. It's like, ugh, you know what I mean? Like, you, you can't be saying those things. You know what I mean? So, watch who you hang out with. And just remove yourself from the situation if you can. I know it's easier said than done, but that's what Paul's trying to say. So, uh, thank you for tuning into chapter 5. We'll see you for chapter 6. And don't take my word or anybody else's word for it. Read it for yourselves, please. And again, uh, put in the comment section if you have any comments, concerns, questions, anything like that. Put in the comment section, not the live chat, but the comment section. And uh, tune in to truthradioshow.com. Uh, listens for all our shows, Spiritual Warfare Friday, Breaking New World Order New Show, Bible Study Shows, and a list of all our other associates, like Now You See TV, uh, and their shows and times and everything else. So go to truthradioshow.com, and also our Rumble channel on there as well. And I uh, thank you for tuning in to the First Corinthians chapter 5. We'll see you for chapter 6, God willing. So God bless, shalom, and remember, you are the resistance.